Right, so we've uh, we're starting where we've left off. This is just like my my crash test uh, save. So you'll see there's there's junk all over the place. Uh, doesn't really matter, does it? And we're on the launch pad. Of all good rockets start their journey. Night time, as we can see, and we don't care where we are, what time of day is. We're just we're just going to launch this thing. Now. Basically, if the controls are if I, well, each time I hit spacebar, each stage will uh, will go through. Um, this is my thrust here, which I'm controlling with uh, left shift, left control to go up and down. We've got press T. We've got SAS. And SAS is it's not, it's not like an autopilot, but it it will try to minimise you moving. So whenever you're not touching the controls it will try to, s to stop you moving and pointing in the same direction and then press R for RCS which is the uh, little propellants as mentioned earlier and uh, I like to start off let medium throttle before I launch the engine then go to full and then let decouple these so let's just do it there's only just enough thrust and weight ratio to get I'm going to defrottle to make everything just a little bit better. I'm going to decouple so now these are in two pieces. Accelerate slightly. Hit the space bar again to make the engine start working. Just get that away and accelerate up. It's actually quite. I've actually gone a bit far too much, not really paying much attention. Uh, if anything, I'm now going to be more concerned about uh, getting back to the planet now, 24,000 metres as well within the atmosphere. So the atmosphere will slow me down and, you know, get me back, get me back to ground because it will cut a lot of the velocity and I won't have enough to carry on going. But we've got some monopropellant and you can use that to manoeuvre slightly so I want to try and make that orbit slightly higher there's nothing really in there I think we'll be okay so we're out of the atmosphere now so while we're on the way up let's just get someone on the outside See, yeah, but it's not just flying rockets around you. You can get your guys out and get them to do things too. That's something I, d I didn't even notice at the start. Things like your parachutes, once you deployed them, they, and if tyres pop, uh, they can get out and fix them and, re and repack them and things like that. So, yeah, it's quite fun. They've also got a little jetpack to fit R. And then move, move around. It's normally WSAD to move around forward, back, left, right, and then shift the control to move up and down. And the, these, this propellant is very similar to the propellants on the side of here, especially we use them for docking and things, and I find, I, know, I've, it's, I think there's a way to do it, but I haven't really looked properly. The control in, with this, this method is extremely good, whereas when you come to, to control yourself in the actual spacecraft, I find it very hard. I think it's either because it's a 2D screen, and or it's just the way the controls are laid out. I find it easy to get somewhere on one angle, and then by the time you're just about to dock, you realise another angle you've fallen totally out. But because you can only see it in one angle, you haven't, you don't notice. And 
to go back in you just uh, go just go back in through the same hatch you came out okay so we go back to the map view we can we can move time along by pressing full stop and comma See when you go into map, you see you, you can I can leave this rocket and go to other things, and there's a large jet there, which I'm surprised at. The fact that I've actually built a plane that didn't crash. I don't, maybe it's in maybe it's in pieces. You know, I can't remember. Anyway, so now now we're at our apoapsis, which is the the furthest point was it from the center of gravity that you're orbiting about. And the opposite is the, is the periapsis, and it's very simple when you're controlling an orbit. It's a lot easier than getting out of orbit. You basically any anything you do on this side of the orbit is going to affect the other side. So it doesn't feel natural. It feels like this. You're going so fast that any any change you have, even by you know 100 meters a second, isn't that different. But so by the time you go over here, it does have an effect. So it's not like you're over here and you go, oh, I want to go this way. I'm going to just blast my engines that way because it, by the time you've come around here it doesn't mean anything anymore what, what actually happens is if you if you if you want to be over here you wait to get to the opposite side fire that direction and you let the gravity and everything swing you around it's a it's a if it, if it helps it's a hell of a lot simpler than I just made it sound a lot simpler basically I'm on this side I go to ooh, a bit over the top there I go to where the direction of which I'm going. I add some thrust that way, but I'm curving around. So actually, what it does is it means I overshoot this way. It's even to me at first, it's a little bit like, hard on minute what's going on, but it's it's extremely simple. It's easy. It's a lot easier than driving a car, but it doesn't look like it. It's a lot easier than driving a car. I run out of fuel and. I can't remember how high, how, how high the atmosphere is, but it's like 30 kilometers to get out of the thick atmosphere, and it's like 60 or 80 or something before there's no atmosphere at all. But um, either on this first, I'm not going to bother going any higher because if I am slightly out, I'm going to want to use my monopropellant propellant to get me back down, and it's it's not the most effective thing to be moving on the large scale. So I'm just I'm going to save it for that, and. Uh, I'm just going to time accelerate again just to get us coming back into the atmosphere. Now, if you're going too fast, uh, it gets when you're at certain altitudes, it will uh, automatically decelerate time just in case you kind of put it at 100,000 would have been clever, and then I'd already be dead by now. So, you know, it's quite good that it does that for you. And the fact that it's gone to one and, f and only possible four means I am I am in atmosphere, but it's going to be thin the atmosphere gauge. It's very thin. I mean most in r in real life on Earth most things in orbit are, are kind of in this area which is why over time they decay. I'm pretty sure if they're out of this area they, they do just pretty much stay there for you know umpteen years whereas when they're in this o over the course of you know I think not even a decade it's like you know two to three years it can lose half of its uh, half of its altitude within the, you know the orbital spectrum so um, things like the Mir space station, uh, I know they decayed quite a lot, and they'd have to when they when they launched up other rockets to to dock with them, they'd use their their thrusters to try and you know keep it, keep it up. And a few of the other satellites they wanted to keep using, they delay had to delay the flights for various reasons, and uh, as a result, they did uh, burn up and re-entry when they you know prematurely. I think Skylab did too. I think that kind of, I think they wanted to keep that going and it uh, re, re hit re entry prematurely but uh you know these things happen it's, it's obviously it's probably in my opinion it's one of the you know the craziest things that people do get up to uh go you know throwing stuff into orbit it's not exactly it's not exactly um simple it's not it's not even necessarily a normal thing to think of it's like oh yeah I know we've got eat and sleep and all those other things, but I tell you what, why don't we go fly to the moon as well while we're at it? Yeah, let's fly to the moon. It's a brilliant idea. You know, it's 
funny. Some people think it's the biggest waste of time. Some people think it's the only thing worth doing. And with me, I, th I think it's anything worth doing. Why not? And as a result of the drag, it is the equivalent of retro burning slightly, and it is bringing down our altitude on the opposite side where we're going to end up. So I think maybe we'll try and go around a few times, see if we, how far it will, uh, will come down. I don't know, with the time accelerator, we're going to be sitting around for a while. No, I think we'll, 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 we'll try a re-entry on the next orbit. Let's, uh, let's go around again, shall we? Come on. I'll show you there's also internal cockpit views. Yeah, if I click on someone and go IVA, yeah, you get their little... Uh, you get their window seat. It's all very, very nice. Let's look at your fellow crew members with their uh, fun face expressions. And you've got all the same controls that uh, that you have from the outside, but you just, uh, they're just visually done differently. So even there you can see if I'm turning the SAS on and if I turn the RCS on, you can see it that way and there's accelerate there. And uh, each cockpit that they have, they, they are done very slightly differently. It's a very nice touch. Cinematic. There you go. Get that fresh new perspective on where you live. 